Good afternoon, my name is Josh from Cyclops Oz and this is your afternoon update on the Queensland rainfall situation for Sunday, January 4th, 2026. Far out, it's going so quick. Anyway, before I get into the video, I would just like to say a massive thank you for 70,000 here on YouTube. That's a massive milestone for me personally and I don't do this for the numbers, but I just thought that I'd say thank you to each and every one of you for not only subscribing, but also watching, clicking the join button and commenting on these videos. It really does mean a lot to me. But let's get stuck straight into the update here. I'm choosing to keep this one a little bit more broad uh, because of time constraints, but also just in the sense that I don't want to go overboard on the details that we don't know just yet. So bear with me here. I'll have some details in the next couple of days, but we'll also have some significant details uh, coming out in regards to the specifics towards the end of next week in regards to how bad this flooding is going to be. But don't get me wrong, just because we're going broad this afternoon doesn't mean we're not going to hammer home what you can expect in your neck of the woods. So stick around to the end of the forecast update and let's start hammering out those details. Right now, a low pressure system situated off offshore from the far north Queensland coastline, connected to a much broader area of low pressure which runs right from the top end of the Northern Territory through the Gulf of Carpentaria, over the Cape York Peninsula and then into the Coral Sea. We've got a very broad, slow rotating area of low pressure and that is what's sparking all of these showers and thunderstorms, particularly on the Queensland side of things, a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity. And unfortunately for those in flood ravaged northwestern Queensland, we had a further 200 millimetres at Richmond last night and that's just causing all sorts of problems through the Flinders River, the Norman River, the Cloncurry River and the Leichhardt River. So major flooding continuing for these locations and in fact even though rainfall eased up about four or five days ago we're still seeing uh, river levels particularly close to the Car uh, Carpentary coastline increase right now. So it's a very bad situation up there. Already in some places water levels have exceeded those set back in 2019 and they're now making a run for 1974. So we're seeing the worst floods up in this part of Queensland in at least 50 years. In a few spots we're now looking at record breaking flooding potential. So this situation is still developing. Make sure you are staying on high ground. And if you are stranded in North Queensland, there's not a whole lot that you can do for the next couple of weeks because it's going to take a long time for this water to recede. The good news is, at least for the far north coastline, we do have the Bruce Highway connecting Cairns down towards Townsville open as of now. The Seymour River dropped last night substantially, so travel is resuming between Cairns and Townsville as of late last night and early this morning. But we do have some heavy shower and thunderstorm activity now pushing into the Herbert catchment, which is going to spell problems for the Bruce Highway there, particularly tonight into early tomorrow morning. I'll touch on that in just a second. But you can also see a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity associated with what's likely to end up being a developing convergence zone somewhere just north of Townsville uh, between Magnetic Island up towards Palm Island in the next couple of hours or so. We're already beginning to see slow moving shower and thunderstorm activity establish itself in this neck of the woods. And our convective forecast models are doing a great job at hammering home uh, where this heavy rainfall is expected to be. And this is the Access North Queensland, which is our high resolution outlook in terms of what we're expecting rainfall wise uh, at certain times tonight. Now, this model can get things dead right, it can also get things very, very wrong. Uh, in this situation here, I believe some of the numbers are a little bit overbaked, but we're still looking at this very concentrated pocket of extremely heavy rainfall that's going to be pretty much strictly coastal based just towards the north and potentially including Townsville tonight up to about Hinchbrook Island. Now the good news is this rainfall does remain for the most part coastal. You can see later tonight we still get some heavy shower and thunderstorm activity further inland into the upper Herbert and then through parts of the Atherton Tableland. So I'm expecting some good dumps out there between 20 to 80 millimetres. Isolated totals to 120 millimetres tonight through the Atherton Tablelands. But for the most part, the really heavy stuff, the 50 to 200 millimeter stuff is going to remain in this black outline here closer to the coastline. And that's good news because it means that the saturated areas up in the upper Herbert and then through other catchments as well, particularly around the Tully River, uh, we're not seeing this rainfall fall in those upper catchments, which means flooding tends to be a little bit on the better side. But we're still talking about very heavy rainfall around the coast, which means flash flooding is possible. The Seymour River, which is pretty much only coastal, uh, and that plays a massive role in regards to whether the Bruce High remains open or shut between Cairns and Townsville is likely to cop a boatload of rainfall uh, and even parts of the Harvey Range particularly on the coastal facing sides of the Harvey Range likely to cop some significant rainfall as well. The good news is at least through parts of the upper Burdekin which runs kind of in this black outline here is not likely to pick up significant rainfall again tonight uh, but yeah, again coastal rainfall is kind of the norm here or kind of what we're expecting tonight and into early tomorrow morning so coastal places likely to pick it up big. Parts of the Atherton Tablelands will also pick it up big but for the most part the heavy rainfall 
remaining coastal, which is kind of the best case scenario, it's the best hand, the best outcome here in what's a pretty tough deck of cards for Northern Queensland, particularly ahead of this flooding situation that's uh, really going to unfold from about Wednesday onwards. And that's one point that I would like to make very clear is if we have a look at some of our flood cams up here or some of our river cams. Now, I know that this one here at uh, Tribbin at the uh, Dalrymple Creek or the Dalrymple Creek. We've got water over the road. That's nothing unusual for this part of northern Queensland, but it paints a picture that is showing that these rivers are saturated. They've got enough water in them right now. They can't cope with any more rainfall. And if we saw 50 millimeters in an hour here, which for far north Queensland is, you know, drop in the bucket type stuff, we'd see some very significant rises to water levels. And I know this is one of about a thousand little creeks and river systems up in far northern Queensland, but it does paint that picture that we're talking about these rivers being completely saturated right now and that is very much a concern because it means heading into this massive rainfall event that we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks up in far northern Queensland uh, saturated rivers they can't cope with the rainfall that we're expecting and because we've seen some significant rainfall accumulations already and the soil moisture values are at 100% they cannot get any wetter up in far north Queensland right now we're talking about this rainfall event being a worst case scenario coming at the worst possible time for these locations not necessarily worst case scenario I shouldn't be calling this because there could be a lot more rainfall or it could come through as a tropical cyclone. We've definitely got the best case scenario in regards to a tropical low coming through and a weak tropical low at that. Uh, but on the rainfall side of things, this is quite a nasty forecast. So just to reiterate, over the next 24 hours, there will be some wet periods, particularly through pockets of the Atherton and Tablelands and maybe even into the Daintree Rainforest as well. But then coastal-based rainfall here adjacent to Harvey Ranges up to about Hinchbrook Island, including Townsville down to about Air or Guru, which is down here. We're looking at some heavy rainfall in these areas and then scattered shower and thunderstorm activity forecasts continue across much of the Cape York Peninsula and into parts of northwestern Queensland where rainfall is just not welcome at this point in time. The good news is it kind of stops on the Flinders Highway which runs roughly along this black line here that I've marked with the F. This is the Flinders Highway. It's still cut in multiple places with water over the road between Greenvale out towards Mount Isa. So uh, the travel between Mount Isa across to Townsville is impossible at this point in time and unfortunately people are biting the bullet and paying for those very expensive plane tickets to make that essential travel between the Isa and Townsville uh, happen. Um, and this is likely to be the situation for at least another week, probably another two or three weeks, given the rainfall that's going to be uh, falling up here. So it's a really, really bad situation. This little rainfall that we're seeing continuing to fall in these areas, you can see it on the radar and the satellite imagery right now. I mean, it's not even that little. This is quite heavy rainfall here towards the north of Richmond and Huendon. It's not good news at all, and it is giving uh, far north Queenslanders a big uh, big headache, that's for sure, and really cutting things off. Northwestern Queensland, though, so far has got the rough end of the stick. The far north coast has dodged major impacts so far. In fact, we haven't even seen flooding, all things considered, across the far north Queensland coastline. But all of the rainfall that we've seen so far, in some places, every last drop of that 1,500 millimetres that's fallen in the past 10 days across far northern Queensland, it has definitely been felt and it's saturated those catchments ahead of this extra 500 to 1,000 millimetres that could be potentially coming in on Wednesday. So let's talk about Wednesday onwards. This is where I'm going to zoom out here and make a little bit more broader uh, forecasting because we're looking at broad areas of low pressure developing here in the Gulf of Carpentaria and then into the Coral Sea. We're likely to see a tight area of low pressure into the Gulf of Carpentaria and potentially another tight area of low pressure. Both of these systems heading down towards the southwest once they get themselves going, albeit very, very slowly, which means rainfall is going to be long lasting, persistent and very slow moving. So let's look at that forecast right now, playing it through Wednesday, now Thursday, out towards Friday. You can see steady but heavy rainfall forecast continue right through this forecast modelling here, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, particularly for the Daintree Rainforest, but also for the Cassidy Coast. Rainfall does start off in the north and it slowly tracks further south as the week comes to a close and the weekend rolls on through. Sunday and Sunday appear to be the wettest days now for the Cape York Peninsula, especially for the Cassidy Coast and also for the Daintree Rainforest. We'll also likely see some very significant rainfall accumulations into the Carpentaria coastline through Saturday, Sunday and Monday onwards and you can see that very heavy persistent rainfall persists right out through Sunday, Monday and then in towards Tuesday. Rainfall is forecast to ease off once this low pressure system then sinks into the Northern Territory which should happen sometime on Monday or Tuesday at the absolute latest on Wednesday but it still paints that ugly picture where we're talking about four potentially five maybe even six days of just steady but heavy rainfall across the far north and whilst it may not amount to the rainfall that we saw last week it's going to come mighty close and it's going 
going to cause more problems than what last week's rainfall did because, like I said, those river catchments are saturated. Uh, if I could draw a graph here, like think of this as the river bottom here and then this is the current water levels. This is your moderate flood marker and then this is your major flood marker. So our 1500 millimeter totals that we saw, especially around Mission Beach, has taken the rivers just below the flood markers. But if we saw an extra 500 millimeters on that and we saw river levels jump up by another 10% from that 500 millimeters, whilst 500 is not a massive amount for far north Queensland, we saw a 10% rise in these river levels that gets them up into the moderate or the major flood thresholds and that's where our problems begin to start. So it's important to understand that even a relatively small deluge right now in a very short period of time, unless these river levels can drop significantly in the next couple of days, which with top up rainfall coming through is not likely to happen, we're going to be talking about very significant moderate, potentially even major flooding unfolding as a result of this rainfall coming through. So even though the rainfall is not actually that bad on the forecast models right now, we could still be talking about some very significant numbers resulting in some very significant impacts. And let's just talk about those numbers right now. Because of the low pressure systems track, which to be honest, for rainfall in the Castro Coast and the Daintree Rainforest couldn't really be any worse, forming here towards the north of Cooktown and then tracking over the Cape York Peninsula into the Gulf of Carpentaria, potentially merging with the other low through here. If they do, it doesn't really change the outlook that much. It does increase rainfall around the Carpentaria coastline, but at least for the Castro Coast and the Daintree Rainforest, regardless of the movement or development of this system here, we'll be talking about that heavy rainfall regardless. Uh, and then for the Daintree Rainforest and the Cassero Coast, big time rainfall accumulations do become a possibility. And we're talking about these numbers here, three to 600 millimetres in a few spots, potentially increasing up to about 700, 800, 900, even closer to 1,000 millimetres in one or two locations. The European, I find, has been lowballing this rainfall forecast quite significantly. And even some of the other forecast models here are really being quite light and quite conservative on the rainfall side of things. We're talking about a North Queensland rainfall event here. So I fail to see where they can get off saying 500 or 600 millimeters is going to occur. I think in multiple places we're going to see much heavier rainfall accumulations, but that's just what the forecast is suggesting right now. And all the details will, of course, come out in the wash when this rainfall does start to fall. But between Wednesday the 7th out to about Sunday or Monday the 11th or 12th of January, respectively, we're we'll talking about a few hundred millimeters per day falling through some of these locations, particularly around the Cassero Coast, which will result in at least 500 millimeters for a few locations and then approaching up towards a thousand millimeters in one or two spots. As you usual Cairns, Townsville and Cooktown will see less rainfall than their surrounding rainforest counterparts but we'll still be talking about a couple of hundred millimetres falling in both locations. Cairns could actually see closer to 500 millimetres of rainfall. I do believe though the Townsville Dome will be in full swing and will likely see lighter rainfall accumulations in Townsville. It's not overly concerning right now the rainfall that's forecast for Townsville. I'm not really seeing any major flood potential in that neck of the woods right now at this point in time. The real big flood zones are through the Cassidy Coast. So we're talking about the Johnston River, the uh, I believe it's the Mul Mulgrave River through here, the Tully River of course as usual, the Herbert River which runs through here, the Seymour River uh, and then down towards Townsville potentially the Ross River and the Bowley River but again a pretty small risk in these areas here, likely below minor but all these rivers here, major flooding is a possibility because of the rainfall that is going to be coming through. It's just a prime setup for some very significant flooding as a result of this rainfall here. Even the Daintree River, depending on how much falls in the Daintree Rainforest, can be very temperamental and difficult to predict, but at least 500 millimetres, probably closer to 1,000 millimetres coming through into the Daintree Rainforest. Moderate flooding, maybe even major flooding for the Daintree Rainforest is a possibility. The good thing with the Daintree is they didn't pick up those 1,000 millimetre falls that we saw across the Cassidy Coast and into the Herbert catchment last week. So the Daintree is starting this rainfall event off on the front foot as opposed to the back foot down here, which means they can cope with a lot more rainfall compared to what the Cassidy Coast is going to be able to cope with before, before flooding starts to become a bit of a concern. Now, of course, I'm going to say this here. If your head is spinning at this point in time, I don't blame you. This is a lot of information to take in, and it's quite overwhelming for me making this video right now to try and, you know, formulate it and to structure it as to not to confuse people. But if you've got any questions or comments or you just care about your river catchment, then let me know what river catchment you're in in the comments section down below, and I'll tell you roughly what we're expecting in those areas. But definitely major flooding now a possibility into the Cassidy Coast. It's, it's a worst case scenario that I'm giving out right now, but that's kind of what we're looking at right now. I mean, the tropical low couldn't really take a worse track through northern Queensland. It really couldn't bring much more rainfall through. And because we've got sky-high sea temperatures and also a very uh, humid and favourable atmosphere for this rainfall, 
I believe that all of these major forecast models are showing the minimum amount of rainfall that is possible. I can't wait to see what the convective forecast modelling has to say through the Casper Coast, which we'll have available to us on Tuesday, because I reckon we're going to be seeing some massive daily accumulations as a result of this rainfall event. And you guys up in far north Queensland, you're familiar. You see 100 millimetres on the forecast and then 300 millimetres falls. You know that these forecasts can get blown out of the water pretty quickly. And that's why I'm always pretty quick to call these extremely bullish numbers, which nine times out of 10 pan out to be correct. So uh, do consider subscribing, do consider following along, especially over on Facebook as well, because I'll have heaps more information in regards to this weather system and some of the numbers we can expect. But that's going to come out Monday and most likely Tuesday before this tropical load does begin to develop, because it's a bit hard to say right now. We don't actually have a tight area of low pressure that's properly developed, which means it's difficult to say for sure how much rainfall is going to come through. Now, tropical cyclone chances as a result of this weather system are pretty minimal at this point in time. The reason for that is because the main area of low pressure is going to be concentrated in this black circle here, which is going to be pulling this rainfall in from the Coral Sea, and it's likely that we're not going to see another low pressure system here develop out into the Coral Sea because we'll have either too much wind shear or this system just being gravitated towards the main area of low pressure in this part of the Gulf of Carpentaria. The only way a tropical cyclone can theoretically develop is if something was to form in this red circle here, which is looking exceedingly unlikely right now. Regardless of what happens, if a tropical cyclone does develop, it's going to remain extremely weak, a touch and go category one, and it's a below 10% chance right now, which means it's not worth worrying about, but I'm giving you the every possible scenario so that you can make the best judgment for your location. In saying that though, this is going to feel like a cyclone for some, particularly in coastal locations. We saw it last week. These winds are going to get quite strong. We'll be talking about gale force winds associated with convergent zones and severe thunderstorms coming through. So it's a good idea to prepare for wind gusts succeeding 80 or 90 kilometers an hour under the right conditions here across parts of the Daintree Coast, the Cassidy Coast, and then even as far south as Townsville. Palm Island can see some pretty strong wind gusts in weather events like this, and the Carpentaria coastline as well, because more defined low pressure is likely to develop through there. We could be seeing 100 km now plus wind gusts anywhere between these red parallel lines, which means we could be seeing some significant gusts around Mornington Island or Robinson River, Normanton, Corumba. It could feel like a cyclone in those areas. This has been a massively detailed and very information heavy update. So take a breath, go make yourself a coffee, go make yourself a cuppa. It's okay. Everything's going to be okay. But I do recommend beginning to consider preparations, particularly from tomorrow onwards, if you do live in some of those areas that are likely to see moderate or major river and flooding. I'll have plenty more information over on the Facebook page. I'm saying this all in uh, good spirit. I'm saying this to get people aware of what's coming. Far North Queensland is built for this type of weather. There are no stranger to this sort of stuff and nothing that I'm saying here is being crafted to insinuate fear or panic. I'm just saying it how it is and I'm saying it how I'm observing it right now. So it's important to keep that in mind. Everybody that's making these forecasts right now or the majority of people making these forecasts we have the best interests of our uh, friends and family up in Far North Queensland at heart, and we want to see everybody as prepared as possible ahead of flooding. Keep in mind, it's much better to be prepared for major flooding and nothing happen as a result in your neck of the woods than it is to be caught with your pants down in a major flood event and you weren't prepared because you're skeptical of the forecast. And that's just my take here. It's much better to be safe than to be sorry. That's the way that I handle things uh, in my personal life and also in regards to the situation here, the weather scene up in Far Northern Queensland in my forecasts. So please do keep that in mind as well. But of course, a massive thank you as always to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. I could not really show without them. That is going to do it for me this afternoon. I hope everybody has a great afternoon and a great Sunday. I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.